Hello all. Since 2020, Cyanix has moved all their software development from SDK to YGIS uh, platform. So in this short video, I'll be describing how you can adapt uh, whatever tutorials we have done from SDK to YGIS. There are, there are very few minor modifications that you have to do. I'm using YGIS 2020.1, uh, but the latest one available is YGIS 2020.2. And Silence, they are still adding features to Whitis, uh, fixing bugs and things like that. So again, there could be modifications in the future. So Whitis, it is also based on Eclipse. So as usual, first of all, you have to specify a workspace. Uh, in this first tutorial, I'm just going to show you the Hello World example. That means there is no hardware involved. We are planning to use only the uh, ARM Cortex A9 core available inside the Zing chip. So here also you will have to start an application project. Either you can start from here or from file new application project, uh, you can start it. And from the figure you can see now, uh, why it is it will be actually creating two projects. One is called a platform project and another one is called a system project, which is basically your application project. The platform project, it has two parts. Uh, it should contain an XSA, which stands for signing support archive. So previously, uh, whenever we develop some hardware in Vivado, we will be exporting it into SDK so that SDK knows uh, what all peripherals are there and what is the address mapping for that. So that file was called an HDF file, hardware design file or hardware specification file. From that, he was creating the X parameters dot H header file and he will be uh, bringing all the required uh, drivers to the board support package. Now that HDF file has been replaced uh, with an XSA file. Now this domain that is uh, just a combination of a particular processor and a particular operating system. So in our case, we'll be using one of the Cortex A9 processors with the standalone OS. So here again, uh, similar to our previous SDK, if you had a, a hardware project in Vivado, uh, you'll be exporting it to SDK uh, here in Whitis and you'll be getting the XSA file here. Uh, since I'm aiming only for a software based project, I don't have that XSA file from Uado. So in that case, uh, in SDK, there was an option like uh, choose pre-configured pre-existing hardware. Same option is available here also. You can go to create a new platform from hardware XSA and you can choose that from there. Again, let me repeat, this is applicable only when you don't have any custom hardware in your PL and you want to just use a processor core from PS. Now here this option is check generate boot components which will basically uh, generate the FSPL files for you uh, for the stage bootloader. That makes sense only if you plan to put your hardware file, bit file and the uh, OS files into an SD card. If you are just planning to uh, directly send it through JATA, this is not required. You can uncheck it even if you keep it there, uh, no issues. So we can go to next and here you will give some name to your project, application project, now we are building. So again, hello world you can give, and you can again choose which processor core you need, since it is a dual core, core zero or core one. If you choose this SMP, symmetrical multiprocessor, uh, standalone, it doesn't support multiprocessor. So if you go to next page, only Linux will be available here. Uh, if you want to use standalone, you have to choose only one of these cores. So let's choose core zero. Uh, go here and standalone. We are running on standalone now. And again, next. Again, like SDK, there are a lot of sample projects. We can choose Hello World project and just say finish. Now, one major difference in why it is from SDK is uh, in SDK, there was an option for auto build, which is coming from Eclipse. That means all the source code uh, will be automatically compiled. Uh, when the project starts, as well as if you change any source code, he will be automatically building it. Okay, so there was an option to enable and disable it. By default, it is enabled. So whenever you change any source file, he will be automatically compiling it. But that option is not there in Whitis. So Silence they are saying like it has some bugs uh, from Eclipse. So they have disabled it. So that we need to keep in mind. That means whenever you are changing any file, you have to recompile it manually. So this is the project structure you will see. And here you can see there are two projects. There is a hello world.sprj, which is the system project. And this is the .prj, which is the application project. 
and on top of that yeah we have the domain which is cortex uh, 90 processor under that you have this set which is coming from that xsa and on the board support package on the drivers they have been moved to this one under your processor core under bsp uh, here are the board support package okay so that is modification we still have this x parameter strategy everything is still there only the directory structure has changed that's the only difference so our hello world example okay this is the sample one given by signing so first of all we need to compile it we need to build the project when you build the project uh, again you can go to project and choose build on uh, again uh, sometimes this won't be highlighted if you have clicked any of the source code here and go there sometimes you will see like it is not highlighted so what you need to do is uh, better you right click this uh, domain one and say build project you can do it either from here or you can build it from this top also build project now if you click on this top and say build project he'll be actually building two projects uh, he'll be building your system project as well as your application project now when he builds the system project uh, he will be trying to build that uh, fspl as well as something called uh, files for SD card okay. and since we excluded FSPL when we started the project uh, it will be giving an error saying like he cannot find that file so you can see he already built the application project now now he is running a command C you can see SD card gen and that will give an error uh, saying like okay he cannot find that file so if you have checked that option at that time uh, there won't be any issue it will build it uh, if you have unchecked it uh, better right click this one hello world and just say uh, build project so we are building only our application project and uh, he has already built it now once it is built uh, as usual uh, you can run it so for that you can either create your own run configuration or you can again right click this hello world and go to run as and by default it will be showing like a single application debug uh, you can choose that or single application debug using gdb either of them so first let me again take my Torato, set the board rate as 115-200 and just right click and say run as launch on hardware single application debug and he will be launching it now and you can see the output here okay or if you want to create your own run configuration that is possible that will make sense uh, again when we have some hardware so there we might have to go to run as and first make a run configuration just like whatever we were doing with SDK so here uh, we will okay uh, check this option if you have an FPGA to program it and this post config again this post config makes sense only if there is some logic in the FPGA otherwise yeah it can be unchecked also no issue so basically this is how you run it now one more thing let me add if you want to change any bsp settings uh, you can double click on this one and you can go to navigate to bsp settings and there you can choose modify bsp settings uh, because in some of the project we want to change our uh, std in and std out from uart so you can go to standalone here and just like sdk you can modify it here okay so this is a quick introduction to why this in the next tutorial i will show you again how to export it from vivado and uh, run it in why thank you